Hello students you have probably heard that our universe is filled with energy in many different forms one of the most incredible type of energy is electromagnetic waves a full range of these waves from radio waves all the way to gamma rays now out of this vast spectrum there's a small section between 400 and 700 nanometers that is really special for us why because it is the only part that interacts with our eyes giving us the sensation we call seeing this is small slice of what we know as visible light even though the rest of the spectrum is beyond our direct vision it's still incredibly useful for human life from radio communications to medical imaging but now we will zoom into this visible section and explore its amazing characteristics under optics that is the study of light including how it is detected and how it interacts with matter optics is studied in two ways ray optics and wave optics there are different light phenomena in nature some of them are only explained by ray optics and some are only explained from wave optics and some uses both as light is also an electromagnetic wave its characteristics are similar to what em waves have so first light have energy second it can propagate with some velocity so far we have learned that light can be understood in two main ways either as a wave in wave optics or as a ray in ray optics but here's the thing a light ray is not actually a real physical thing it's just a way for us to visually represent the direction that light travels from its source to wherever it's observed and a bundle of such rays constitutes a beam of light using this idea of light as a ray we can explain a lot of its behaviors especially when it interacts with different surfaces and all of these properties of light based on this ray concept will be what we dive into here in ray optics in the next chapter we will go deeper into wave optics where we will study the wave nature of light moving ahead when light hits a surface three things happens transmission absorption and reflection some of the light can pass through the surface which we call transmission some of the light might get absorbed by the surface turning into heat but we won't focus on heat in this series and some of the light bounces back from the surface which we call reflection in this video we will explore reflection and transmission while leaving out absorption because it is not a point of focus in optics let's start with reflection which can happen in two ways regular and irregular reflection regular reflection when light hits a smooth surface like a mirror it reflects in a regular pattern this is called regular reflection a smooth plane surfaces like mirrors allow light to bounce back without disturbing its pattern this organized reflection is why we see a clear image in a mirror irregular reflection now let's look at less smooth surfaces some surfaces may look smooth but if you zoom in like on a paper you would see tiny imperfections these imperfections disturb the pattern of reflected light scattering it in different directions this type of reflection where light scatters is called irregular reflection and it prevents the image from forming mirrors are especially designed to be as smooth as possible on a microscopic level keeping the light pattern organized and allowing a clear reflection in this series we will go deeper into how image form and explore more about reflection and transmission let's continue our journey into the world of light before we move forward let's take a closer look at a very important concept in reflection the normal it might seems like a small part of the process but it plays a big role in understanding how light behaves when it strikes a surface what is normal in the context of reflection the normal is an imaginary line drawn perpendicular at 90 degree to the surface at point where the light ray strikes it's like a reference guide for measuring angles the angle of incidence and the angle of reflection is measured with respect to this line actually without the normal it would be challenging to define or measure these angles and we wouldn't have a standard way of predicting how light will reflect off a surface so let's talk about the laws of reflection which you may already know first 
the angle of incidence is always equal to the angle of reflection. Second, the incident ray, the reflected ray and normal all lie in the same plane. When we talk about the same plane, think of it as a flat sheet, like a piece of paper. If we place objects, lines or ray on this paper, they all stay on it and don't come out or go below it. In the context of reflection, the incident ray, reflected ray and the normal all lie on this same imaginary flat surface. It's like drawing three lines on a single piece of paper. They don't lift off the page or dip below it. This idea of the same plane helps us to understand how these rays interact with each other in an organized, predictable way. These laws form the foundation of how light interacts with surfaces. For better understanding, we will visualize these principles so you can clearly see how they work. Reflection from flat surfaces We have seen how light reflects off flat, smooth surfaces. Such surfaces like plane mirrors produce a regular reflection where the reflected rays are parallel. This type of reflection helps us to see clear and sharp images. But what makes a mirror reflective? Let's uncover this interesting fact. Hear how it works. Transparent glass by itself is not reflective. A thin layer of metal polish, usually silver, is applied to the back of the glass. This metal layer reflects light, while the glass protects it from oxidation, a reaction with air that can damage the metal. Together, this combination of metal and glass creates what we call a mirror. Not all mirrors are flat. Mirrors can have different shapes, and these shapes determine how light reflects. For example, flat mirrors produce regular, uniform reflection. Curved mirrors change the direction of light in unique ways. A special type of curved mirror we will focus on today is the spherical mirror. To understand the concept of spherical mirrors, let's start by imagining two shiny spherical balls. The first ball reflects light from its outer surface or periphery. The second ball, however, has its inner surface reflective. This simple visualization gives us a great starting point for understanding the two types of spherical mirrors, convex and concave. Imagine slicing the first ball to get a curved surface. This surface is now a convex mirror with its reflective surface curving outward. Similarly, slicing the second ball gives us a concave mirror with its reflective surface curving inward. Nomenclature of Spherical Mirrors To study spherical mirrors, we use some key terms. First, pole. The midpoint of the mirror's reflecting surface. It acts as the reference point for all measurements represented by capital P. Second, center of curvature, represented by C, the center of the sphere from which the mirror is apart. So, for concave mirrors, it is located in front of the mirror. And for the convex mirrors, it is located behind the mirror. Third, principal axis, the straight line passing through the mirror's pole and the center of curvature. Fourth, radius of curvature, represented by capital R the distance between the mirror's surface and the center of curvature. Focal length F The distance between the focal point and the pole of the mirror. F is equals to half of the radius of curvature measured from the pole. These terms are like the map that help us to understand how light behaves with the mirrors. Now that we have laid the foundation, we will explore how images are formed in spherical mirrors using the mirror equation and ray diagram. We will learn how to locate and identify images, so stay tuned as we unlock the fascinating world of spherical mirrors and reflection with the power of visuals. That's all for today's introduction. Keep exploring, keep learning and let's make physics simple and exciting together. Need a quick recap of the laws of reflection? I have got something amazing for you. Check out my interactive digital notes with QR code animation. Just scan or click to see concept come alive. It's super simple, visually appealing and available at nominal price. Find the link in the description box and visit our website. Visual parts are. And guess what? We are working on even more exciting notes that truly amaze you. Thank you so much for watching.